There's a man on the dance floor. You better not feel the groove. DJ, I'm gonna burn this goddamn house right down. Can we leave that in? Yeah, we can leave it in if you want. It's a terrible start to someone's week, but it's oh no, this is no. When's our podcast come out? Oh, no, the no, end of the this week. is the the weekend. Oh, it's Luke. called weekend. It's right? called week. Yeah, yeah. I think you briefly had a <laughs> stroke. <laughs> <laughs> Just a brief one though. But me having a stroke, like most people, like the signs of a stroke would like their one half of their body goes numb or like their smelling heart. smelling burnt toast. Yeah, my like <laughs> diagnosis, like I think. He's having a stroke if I just start going, there's a murder on the dance floor. <laughs> and then forgetting what the podcast is called. DJ, I think he's having a stroke. Oh my God, <laughs> call an ambulance. He's having a stroke. <laughs> Welcome back to Luke and Meg. We're getting you ready for the weekend. Yes, we are. We are in Edinburgh. Hello, uh, you bloody Hello, geezers. Governor. That's not... That's, that's Hold on, that's, uh, that's London. British. That's that's uh, British. Scottish is more like, uh, channel your inner Shrek. Everyone here sounds like Shrek. It's like a whole place and everyone's pissed off about someone being in their swamp. I'm pretty sure everywhere we've been, Luke's been like, come on, man, talk like Shrek. Do a Shrek quote for me. Do a Shrek quote for me. And Every time I meet a sound tech, I'm like, oh, can you say like, if it was me, you'd be dead? And they're like, okay. And they say it and I'm like, oh, let's go. It's awesome. It's literally like if <laughs> someone came to Australia and were like, can you say put another shrimp on the barbie? Yeah, it literally. Like, it is oh, the equi- – oh, I don't know, actually. Shrek quotes go hard. It's actually not the same because Paul Hogan is a real person. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm being like, can you do an ogre impersonation for me now? <laughs> Why is this guy looking through our window? But he's probably trying to see if we're doing an OnlyFans because all he can see is there's a camera that's been set up in a living room uh, and I'm pretty sure this is... Yeah, but they were taking photos of the house next to us before. Oh, yeah? Yeah, this is how cocky I'm getting. I'm like, oh, probably some fans. So I should probably time. get my tits out, huh? What? Give them a show. <laughs> sure. No, nah, you should get your tits out. That's a show. You just no. pop a neat. <laughs> you go up to the window, put your foot on the windowsill, and you're like, here you go, boys. Not, you not for free. Flash your nut. Not for free. <laughs> no, if you've got something good, never give it away for free. <laughs> Tickets at lukekidgel.com to my pretty good comedy. If someone was like, flash me like just a, a little bit of your nut, a tiny bit of your neat, how much would you do it for? Doesn't even have my face. Nut, nothing, just a nut. Oh. Because it could be any nut, like I guess. a dollar. Take <laughs> <laughs> it. Dollar. It's just a ball sack. Like if it's not associated with my ball sack, I could just Google a picture of a ball sack. Really? <laughs> yeah, but they just send it to someone. You would you would be associating whatever ball sack you send through <laughs> with you because you'd be the one sending it. <laughs> They're like, send me a picture of a ball sack with today's Edinburgh newspaper, like next to it, <laughs> and your like signature over the top of it. <laughs> So then it's a like a more. Polaroid, a Polaroid picture just that you've signed. Yeah, <laughs> probably more than probably like two dollars. It would be even more confusing if you did get another photo of someone else's nut. In that case, <laughs> if it's like a a custom pol- Polaroid, yeah, I'm just signing someone <laughs> else's nuts. I signed a crazy frog last night after the show. That was awesome. It was a fi- he bought like up an actual yeah figurine of yeah, it. You cool. signed it. Um, the show's been awesome. The UK is sick. Dude, do it's so start? good. I don't even know. I fucking love this place. Start it from the beginning. That's where most stories begin. Or should we do like one of those like time, time jump movies where, you know, we start telling a story now. Like it starts in the future. Can I do the rewind? Oh, no, fuck. We need to start the weekend. Oh, shit. Okay, yeah, hold on. Turning up so, winding down. Mm-hmm. You, you must be thinking, guys... How, what are we going to do? How are we going to know what to do over the weekend and how to feel if there's no spinning wheel here? Well, well, good. We shipped the big wheel. No, that's not true. We got a mini wheel made, a travel wheel. It's so small. It's, uh, I would say it's the size of a coaster. I reckon no drum roll, no big hoo-ha, flick it once. And that's what we're doing for the weekend. (laughs) (laughs) I'll hold it out. You give it a flick. (laughs) That's what she They said. definitely think that we're doing a porno in here. They absolutely do. Makes flicking. Oh, that She's was a good it. one. We're winding down. We're winding down. Dun, 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 that was dun, dun, dun. over so quick. That was over so quick. I did do a good flick though. I'm not that uh, 
mad about that because we have a weekend off, I think. Yeah, and I'm um, I'm absolutely like winding I'm s- down because I'm fucking tired, but dude. I'm screwed. I'm screwed. The shows have been so freaking good, but we'll start from the beginning. Let's do the rewind sound. <laughs> All right, we're here. It wouldn't be balls. It'd be balls backward. It'd be like, so Labs. <laughs> Labs. <laughs> no, it'd be so It'd be what are we doing? Oh, yeah, you told people about it. Sorry. So okay. we got on the plane. Oh, okay. The first thing that went wrong, well, a lot of things went wrong. I feel like Luke I had was a really bad 24 hours Luke, on the way here. I had a shocker. I think it was the worst 24 hours you have ever had. It was the wars for you. I just, in the end, felt so bad. Well, like, we, so I woke up that morning, hadn't really packed. It started off my fault. so Because <laughs> you hadn't packed. Yeah, I could have probably started off in a better way. But it packed all day. We kind of left at night. We also did last week's podcast that day as well. Yeah. And if you listen to the end of last week's podcast, you will you would have already heard me having a mental breakdown about <laughs> six hours before we went to the airport. So this is kind of the story. <laughs> the story really picks up right after we left last week. Yes, this it is does. just the sequel. Yeah, right? <laughs> this is the continuation. And then we get to the airport and my phone charger broke or oh, no, i think my phone's broke no your phone broke now i'm one of those people and i used to judge and laugh at these people because blake a pavey on tour he's little like he you know the people when they're a little the charging port in your phone that you put the cord in gets broken so people start rolling around with those pad charges yeah where you stick your phone and you lay it yeah and it's embarrassing because you're backstage and you're holding like this big pad to the Back yeah, it's it's just sad, like especially when you have to try and use the phone because you're well, then just holding the thing or you're on the ground. But like, it was like 50 bucks, so I got stung at the airport. No, well, for, for like 20 minutes though, he was – so we have like five phone chargers in our bag. Like he decided to take every phone charger in the bloody house. Mm. And so he's going around going, oh, my God, all of these phone chargers are broken, <laughs> all of them. And I'm like, what do you mean? All five of the phone chargers are broken. And yet he, he was like – yeah, yeah, all five of them are broken. It's not my what? phone. Listen up, kids. <laughs> Never, ever look internally and blame yourself. Blame other factors, other people, <laughs> other things in life because you are not the problem. Oh, my God. A little bit of inspo to head into the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have the c***iest audience ever. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Manufactured by us. <laughs> Because you know what? I've been meeting them all after the shows. A lot of Luke and Meg fans. Too bloody nice. They're so lovely. Me. Can I give a shout out? And yeah. I, I don't want to uh, make shout outs a regular thing. Yeah. This podcast. Why? Ah. All right. Quick yeah. shout out. I don't like them. That's fair. <laughs> I just would like, I'm happy to do them. On past podcasts I've done, we've banned them. Yeah. But I'm happy to just do minimal. Okay, go. Shout out to Ollie. Uh, he was in Edinburgh at my show. He uh, lives here now, but he's from Sydney. He uh, came up, like, so he's lived here for like 10 years, but he's originally from Ye- Sydney. So yes. he was like one of the only Australians in the crowd. Front row, mullet on. Representing. Why did I say like he had put it on? Like he, <laughs> It's the flag. He went on and just, like, he left the house. He's like, I'll put on my mask. <laughs> Goes in, puts it on like a helmet, (laughs) snaps it in. Just front row, absolute king. Like he got ripped on a bit like by the opening act and then I did keep ripping on him. Oh, yeah. Anyway, lovely guy, great sense of humor. Comes up after the show and was like, oh, I found you, uh, both of you through your podcast, like just a clip. Let's go. And he's like, he looked around and goes, I had no idea that you really did all this stand-up stuff. He's like, I just enjoy your podcast. That's so good. I was like, <laughs> Six seven episodes in And the the one person That's just a sole Luke and Meg fan Like he has no interest in anything That's else the I first do. one we've I, I think we've had ever uh, Yeah Like the first actual just Luke and Meg fan Who was confused that I was telling jokes He was like <laughs> oh Why aren't you recording <laughs> Wait, like a podcast Where's Meg? Where's your co-host bro? <laughs> anyway he was very lovely So sh- shout out to him Yes anyway, 
We're at the airport. I get, I get stung for like fifty dollar charger. Obviously, I haven't eaten dinner, so I get charged for like an eighteen dollar burger. Yeah, whatever, you name it. I've sp- I already dropped about one hundred and fifty bucks at the airport mm. by the time I've even got on the plane. Yeah, and then I also, in the process of us eating that ridiculously expensive meal, I uh, accidentally ate my tongue. That's true. Uh, so like. Still no feeling in the tongue, guys. Uh, And a new update, because I've started eating, uh, turns out if you've got a numb tongue, you can't feel when you're chewing it off. So I actually bit a quarter of my tongue off. Just fell off. Meg keeps getting hungry for tongue. Yes. Um, 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 um. Meg's like, I've bitten another part of my tongue off. Yeah, well, it starts (laughs) bleeding profusely. But, you know, it's so weird. The next day started healing up straight away. Anyway, because she keeps biting bits off, she's constantly running at eighty percent tongue. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's really weird. <laughs> anyway, yes, you got stung at the airport, fifty dollar case. Yeah, so I'm already furious by the time I've got on the plane. Yeah, first flight's great. I'm a type of guy I don't really get time to watch many movies. So I, when I get on planes, it's like the only time I watch movies. So I tick off things that I've never seen. I try and watch a few classics, and then. Like a few things I haven't seen. Ticked off like three X Men films. It was great yeah. in the first flight. Oh no, two in the first flight. Uh, we get to Hong Kong, stop over, get back on the plane like an hour later to go from Hong Kong to London, and that is a fourteen-hour flight. The next leg after I've just done nine. We sitting down. I look in my bag. I can't find my glasses, and I am very dependent on my glasses. They're Super. Blue light. I have a custom prescription, and I've only had the eye surgery about three and a half weeks ago so my eyes are still incredibly painful when i don't wear them and it was like recommended by the doctors like maybe you just wear them all the time when yeah. you can yeah uh just to help your eyes recover like whenever you're looking at your phone any single screen, screen any screen that you you, like, wa- you know if yeah. you're gonna sit uh awake staring in a screen after you've been awake for already 24 hours um and you got to do another 14 of just consuming <laughs> mindless content Make sure you wear glasses. They're not in my bag. I've realized I've left them on the last plane. Uh, So my glasses currently are somewhere in Hong Kong. (laughs) So if anyone in China has seen them, um, I don't know how big our podcast listenership is from (laughs) Hong Kong. I don't think it's that big, man. But if you are from Hong Kong... Have a look around, check check your couch or something like that. <laughs> Could have fallen down the crack. They're most likely uh, on an aeroplane somewhere. Yeah. But I so I go up to the like the staff, they're like, there's they're pretty pretty much like they're lovely, but they're like, there's nothing we can do about it. The plane's like already gone. Uh, you can contact lost property. But at this point I didn't have a SIM card in my phone that worked because we have our Australian SIM cards. We're gonna we're planning on buying London SIM cards. We had a 24-hour period yeah. where we didn't like couldn't call someone. Yeah, right? exactly. We could use the internet, but well, not it. Yeah, the the plane Wi-Fi fucking sucked. It didn't even yeah. work. I don't think. No, it didn't. So then I, because now most people in this situation would go, all right, we'll just give your eyes a rest and maybe try and get some snoozers in for 14 hours because you've already a been bit up sleep. for 20 for over 24 hours straight. Yep. Not me. Philosopher's Stone, X Men Two. <laughs> My eyes are fucking bleeding at this point. <laughs> they were actually, that's not an exaggeration. I looked at him and his eye had literally popped a blood vessel. Popped it was a blood vessel. It was bleeding. But Wolverine was on my screen and it actually felt like Hugh Jackman had just like got the claws out. It's like the true, the, the true 4D experience. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's taking 4D to like a whole new level. Yeah. Um, and then just continued to watch movies for 14 hours and I could not see, think or do anything Yeah. Uh, for like 48 hours when we got to London. I was in a different planet. Yeah, it was pretty brutal. And then we've been trying, I eventually just got blue light glasses today. I've been having a week where I can't do anything. It was pretty much just the worst start to the trip imaginable. Mm. And it, I'm still not at the point where I'm laughing about it. Meg is. Uh, well, no, because you're still in pain. You still don't have your glasses. I don't think you're yeah. going to be laughing about it until you've had at least a week where you have your glasses and you're yeah, yeah ready. Like Amazon blue light glasses and make things I look cool in them. I like them. I like them. Um, oh, if you actually are in the UK and listening to this, uh, there still is tickets to Sheffield. Oh, yeah. 21st. Not many, though. Really the biggest show I've ever done yeah. in my entire career. <laughs> it's in, in Sheffield. Sheffield. 
It's like a 1,200 seater and I think there's only like 70 tickets left. So I would love to see you there. That's going to be fun. Um, well, we can talk about this. Yeah. Can you – You okay. <laughs> we still haven't done London yet, so I don't really want to put many people offside, but fuck it. <laughs> You're a bunch of fucking miserable pricks, aren't you? <laughs> you really are, the Brits. <laughs> No, and I know that sounds uncalled. Not all of them. Well, well, a, large, a lot of them. A large majority. A lot. So we get to London. We're enjoying ourselves, by the way. It's not London that's the problem. No. Right? It was fine. It was great. Like, Ed, the North has been m- much more fun, mm. but London was great. Yeah, I like it. Edinburgh, Edinburgh a lot more. Awesome. <laughs> Newcastle was great. Uh, we'd have gone Glasgow tomorrow, right? It, it's been awesome. Um, and we were having a beer, celebrating the fact that, you know, we're doing shows overseas. It's cool. Just to, We had a couple of nights to ourselves before we started this hectic tour run. Yeah, so, exactly. God forbid we go and have a quiet beer by ourselves. I put it on my story and I wrote, <laughs> London pubs go extremely hard, which is very positive. Yeah. Right? And it was, look, it wasn't a, a complete lie. We like, were having a great time. Yeah, I was enjoying it. Dude, the amount of angry DMs we got. <laughs> Just people just like, they're, they're shit. They're not even pubs. They're <laughs> bars. They're too expensive. You fucking don't know anything. Blah, blah, blah. Like some person just went, get the fuck out. Same person a year earlier. Why don't you ever come to London? No. Oh my God. They're like, you're driving up inflation prices. You get the fuck out. Comments on my post. We posted a picture of us in front of the Tower Bridge because we're tourists and we're like, oh, that was in Spider-Man. And all the <laughs> comments are like, you're the ones driving up inflation. Go fuck yourselves. And we're like, dude, we're just trying to visit the palace and just hang out for two days. We're trying to see something that we've never fucking seen before. God forbid a couple of tourists come in and stimulate your fucked economy. You're the same, <laughs> you're the same people who will go to Australia <laughs> and who are like, where the fuck are all the kangaroos? Yeah. Where are, you'll be in literally the city and you'll be like, where are the, where are the kangaroos? Why is there no bush around? No, I mean, they wouldn't sound like that. That's what we'd sound like. In <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, because I'm Australian. Yeah, yeah. So Hold on a second. Sorry. Why the bloody fuck are there no... Where, where are the bloody kangaroos? Yeah, right. Where are the bloody kangaroos? When I'm saying this, I'm not joking. I've never gotten so much negativity... Towards anything I've probably ever done in my career. Yeah. Then post a picture of us at a pub. Yeah. And I didn't realize how unpopular it would be to enjoy London pubs. Now, I understand they're expensive, but we're tourists. We're there for two nights. I'm happy to pay like eight pounds or whatever for a pint. I know that's expensive. That's like, actually is a lot. It's like, it wasn't even that much. It was like six pounds for a pint. Yeah. Which is like $12. And I don't think they realise alcohol is taxed so much in Australia that that's often what we pay when we go out, like your equivalent of maybe six or seven pounds for a pint. And they just like can't fathom that. And we're like... Well, particularly, it's, it's, that's more so in like uh, the city and yeah, stuff. London's which is but the north is... Yeah, that's the thing. So it's, it's quite relative, actually. And then I've been talking about this on stage and it's funny because I've been like up north. I'm like, dude, are people in London just miserable? And everyone just is like, yes. Yes. <laughs> Yes. Watch me 180 flip. Like we're in the north right now doing Scotland and like northern England and stuff. And I've been like, yeah, those fucking people in London. So miserable. (laughs) As soon as I get to London, I'm like, what the fuck's up with those Scots? You know? (laughs) Because I just like. Just plain to any people that you have. Anyone in front of me. I'm like, I agree with you. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) No, I won't. To be honest. No, I think we had fun though. I I really liked it. I liked going around like being a tourist. It was Fucking cold though. Yeah, turn on the sun. It's fucking cold out here. It's broken. Fix it. Because it's fine back in Australia. If anything, Australia, we've turned it up too much a lot. But oh, I don't know. Melbourne can be really shit. Melbourne, but most most of the time it's fine. Mm, it's, I love it's your fun. pub names. I wrote down my favourites because British pubs they're pretty much in three formats. It's either the something tavern mm. uh, or. The something arms, like the Guildford arms <laughs> or the Shenny Wax arms or yeah. the something arms, like the oh, I'm a Make-A-Wish kid with no arms or like whatever. <laughs> like, it doesn't matter. <laughs> something like that, right? And then my favourite type of pub is the pubs where they just pick two random words yeah. and put them together. And it's usually a random like object and an animal. Or an animal and an object. I've literally been writing down the ones we've seen. All okay. right. 
The cask and barrel, the hard and castle, the berry and the barrel, the dog and duck, the coach and horses, the sog and bell. I think I wrote that down wrong. <laughs> I feel like they would actually sog. They would absolutely do that. Let's come on. And now I've been just trying to come up with great pubs names. Like that's all Megan and I do. We just we just walk around thinking of pub names. Yeah, like the limp and biscuit. <laughs> the best one I came up with. <laughs> no, this was great. Oh, the queef and the turd. <laughs> Tell me you wouldn't want to get a pint at the Queef and the Turd. And then I said, because like usually the lower part of the pub, that's like the main part, but then they'll have usually a ladies' lounge. I thought that the ladies' lounge could just be called the Queef Lounge yeah. instead. And the, the, men, the gentleman's lounge is the Turd. The Turd. At the bottom of the pub. It's in the basement. It's in the basement, yeah. Yeah, it smells like Gary. Yeah. You know, just some guy that, that goes there every Wednesday. Okay. Smells like turds. Yeah. That's the aroma. Please leave your pub name suggestions below, like oh the, the nickel in the back. You know? <laughs> For some reason, I think going with rock band from the 90s as English pub names is funny. Don't know why. You just got to pick uh, two random objects. It's a pretty easy game. It's a low barrel. Uh, barrel? I'm already thinking of pubs. It's a low <laughs> bar of entry. <laughs> Yes, the shows have been awesome. A bit on. There's been a bit going on. There is, you, a, yeah. That's it's it's very overwhelming. Yeah, There's been a lot. Your KFC sucks. Oh fuck! Let's what a, have you done? Let's address that. What are you doing here? God, it sucks. It tasted like cardboard and cum. <laughs> and I know what both of those things taste like. So yes, <laughs> it did taste like that. <laughs> <laughs> Does it like your mum listen to this pod? Nah, I think she she thought she would like it. And then I think she listened to the first episode and she's like, ah, I think I'll give it a miss. Yeah, yeah now I wonder I wonder why. <laughs> so I wonder if the part maybe it was the part where you where a daughter said, I like come. That <laughs> might have been the bit that she would have been like, Oh, maybe this is not for me. <laughs> <laughs> Did I say that in the first app? No, but you you know, it's just well, you said you, know, you said it then. Yeah. Now she's definitely not listening. Now she's so definitely much. not listening. Absolutely not. Um, what do you want to... Oh, yeah, this is one. I have a question for you. Oh, a question. Okay. 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 Um, <laughs> you know how we flew from... So we're in London for a couple of days. Then we flew from London to Edinburgh, like on a domestic flight. Yeah. And the way you booked the flight was... I don't like sitting in the middle seat. I love an aisle seat and Meg knows that. Yeah. But she likes a window seat. And sometimes it's just a good play if the flight's not too busy to roll the dice and book one person on the window seat and one person in the aisle because often they just won't put a person in between you. Well, no, the person, yeah, or the person doesn't want to choose to be in between you yes. so they'll go somewhere else. Yeah. Right? So often you just get the middle seat free. Yeah. Unfortunately, some guy came and sat in between us. Yeah. And... Before we left to the airport, we were both like, ah, we're really tired. I can't be bothered to have a shower. And I remember you saying the phrase, yeah, I definitely smell like crusty fish. Yeah. And you kept on saying this phrase, like, yeah, crusty fish. Yeah, I definitely smell like crusty fish. And then fish. I was like, yeah, no, definitely crusty fish. And, yeah. and then I just Wait, you smell like crusty fish. As well. Yeah, I distinctly remember <laughs> saying the phrase, dude, fuck the person that has to sit next to us <laughs> on the plane, right? <laughs> then we get on the plane, the guy comes <laughs> sit next to us, he's like reading a book. You know where this is going, don't you? I know where this is going. <laughs> we take off, we've been in the plane for about 25 minutes, it's only like an hour and a bit flight. It's kind of like flying for Australian people between like Melbourne and Sydney, right? Yeah. It's not a very long flight. As soon as the seatbelt light goes off, the guy closes his book, gets out of his seat and goes, excuse me, I'm going to go. And he had like a real thick British accent. He goes, excuse me, I'm going to move seats now. And then he just got up and walked down the other end of the plane. And my question for you is, do you think it's because we both smell like crusty fish? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, that guy. There was li- <laughs> there was literally three free seats. There were three. All around us. There were three free seats next to us, like literally next to us. This guy got up and walked to the other fucking end of the plane and so sat confusing. with another person. I'm pretty sure, Do just on the he end. He had a friend at the end of the plane, or, or he was traveling. By God, himself. I fucking hope so. 
I hope so. I don't know what the rules are here, but in Australia, it's like very kind of strict assigned seating on planes, like well, you, especially you, with COVID. Yeah, like since COVID, you you can get up and move, but then on the landing, you have to go back to your original seat. He did not return. No, sir. And we never saw that man again. And the whole time, I felt like he he was kind of weird about it. Like he was sitting in between us, and he looked. He was like kind of looking in between us, and he looked really uncomfortable. Yeah. And I was just like to him, like, can I like help you like what Stop. maybe he was like is it me <laughs> maybe he was like i don't know if this is me and then he went one side and he's like crusty fish to the other side and he's like yep crusty fish okay so maybe it is me because why would both of these seemingly strangers because why would you not just sit together if you're together yeah. why do the both of these strangers smell like crusty fish <laughs> yeah true that's true we probably just made him really self-conscious <laughs> so that's why he's probably like oh my god like i've I've put on the wrong perfume. I thought I put on. I must be the one. You know, like Calvin Klein, I put on Krusty Fish. You know? <laughs> and he, yeah, maybe he moved because he was insecure. Yeah, that's awesome. Nah, it's, what it's, a power move from yeah. us. <laughs> Let's go. Out, out whiffing a stranger on a plane. Okay. So the moral of this story, guys, Don't is. shower before you fly. Yes. Because you might get another free seat. Yeah. For sure. For sure. Um... I got a text from my sister the other day because I always ask her how my niece and nephew are doing, um, particularly my niece because she's just started school. And so I'm like, okay, this is a big moment in her life and I've left for a month like right at the very beginning of her starting school. Meg is the Disney auntie. I am absolutely the Disney auntie. When I come back, I'm like, let's go to the arcade. Let's go to the farm. Let's go fucking do shit. Let's and make like, up for all the time that I'm in here in your life, in your formative years. Yeah, and they're like, yeah, auntie <laughs> Meg, auntie Meg. And I'm like, Candy, there we go. Let's go. <laughs> Kirsten uh, messaged me the other day just going, oh. <sighs> so, uh, Gracie's come out. I'm like, what do you mean she's coming out? She's like, oh god, I uh, it's been been a big week for us. Um, so she's a she's a vlogger now, and I was like, oh my god, no! It happens to the best of them. It's <gasps> happened to me. No. Oh, hey, guilty. Bloody hell. These bloody vloggers coming in. And they're not taking our jobs because they're usually unemployed. No, but they're warping their, our children's minds. They're coming in and they're invading our algorithm. <laughs> <all right? laughs> yeah. And I don't like it. You know, us original vloggers, you know, you don't know what it's like. It was everyday bro with the Disney channel. Right? <laughs> right? And you wouldn't understand that. All right. No, <laughs> I, I go back home and I like confront your five-year-old niece. <laughs> and I'm like, Grace, all right. This is kind of my territory. I'm the attention seeker in the family. Don't take my thing. Right. <laughs> She'd probably vlog the whole scenario. <laughs> She'd be like, Luke Kidgel, my <laughs> auntie makes boyfriend, cracks could... the shits at dinner. And it's like. At five-year-old niece. Yeah. <laughs> I experienced child abuse. <laughs> and then it's like, in asterisk, emotional. <laughs> No, but apparently she gets off like every morning and she has like the like a fake camera. She'll just go around the house going like, so guys, this is my getting ready. Uh, I'm about to go to school. And she's just vlogging. So she doesn't vlog on the phone or anything? No, she's just vlog like to an imaginary camera. See, when we were kids, we used to play like imaginary, uh, like, like cops or robbers or like imaginary doctor. That was a dope game, or cops or robbers. Yeah, but like we used to play like imaginary... Uh, House Like that was just the thing That girls used to do Like yeah. imaginary tea party Yeah or Now kids are just like Vlogging Consuming so much content That they're like Imagining That they're like Doing like a bubble tea brand deal <laughs> Look, there were warning signs. There were a lot of warning signs about this because literally a week prior to this happening, uh, we were playing like one of those beanbag games where you have to get the beanbag in the hole. Um, and we were just like playing it and I missed and she, oh no, she missed a shot and she just goes, oh God, just replay the video. And then Xavier started like dying laughing because he was like, did you? say replay the video we're, we're in real life and then she started laughing oh as well she was being serious she was like oh just replay the video and i was like that's not good i was like 
babes, we're in real life. Um, you're actually holding a physical beanbag. You're not watching a show right now. We cannot just take it back 10 seconds. We've hit the point where kids now are struggling to understand the difference. Between she's five real though. Real life and yeah. online. But she's five. Blended. So if that's like, I know. Oh, fuck. And that's the thing. It's not just like. Just put chips in their brain. They'll be happier. <laughs> We can control them easier that way as yeah, well. Yeah, and then they can replay the video. <laughs> <laughs> so, they can be like, hang on, what happened again? <laughs> oh. Um, yeah, and then Kirsten was like, there was a, another kind of just out of the blue message and she goes, uh, can you explain to me why my five-year-old just told me to commit to the bit? <laughs> Oh what video would you watch? That, I was I'll like, honest, hey, mum, just commit to the mit- bit, babe. <laughs> just that commit to the bit. might be my influence. I feel like... <laughs> Did you well, say that one time? No, but kids just like... You know, like they just pick up on stuff. It's yeah. why like if you, people say like you shouldn't swear on kids. Everyone's like, oh, well, they're, they're not listening. It's like, well, no, they pick up on... Yeah, they pick say. up on things. Like, Did you, you like sometimes like to Matt, or like who, who is their dad and stuff. Like, oh, my you know, God. Matt and Kirsten. I'll be like, you know, Matt, Matt commit to the bit. I'm like, come on, man, commit to the bit. Like, don't, don't do this <laughs> if you're not going to commit to the bit. So maybe like, I don't know, like who else in your family is dropping lingo like commit i know bit. i feel like this is this is entirely our fault like yeah. this is completely our fault she wakes up one morning for kindergarten and she's like mom are we winding down or turning up this weekend <laughs> you know kirsten's like fucking meg <laughs> jesus that is like how crazy is legitimately that? kind of terrifying i know i don't and th- this is the thing it's not it's not just um kirsten was like i've like taken away i've i've like really uh, shortened their time on like screen time and everything. But because at school, like some kids their age already have smartphones and stuff. So yeah. And like prep. Yeah. Oh, like, like some kids have like, they bring their tablets and stuff or um, because they have iPads now at school. It started off with, do you have any games on your phone? That was like five to 10 years ago. Yeah. And now it's, I have all the games I've ever wanted on my iPad. No, but not only that, need to ask on my anymore. iPad, on my smartphone, on my computer, on my now it's us going Switch, so do you PlayStation. Have any games on your phone? Yeah, yeah. I'm like, oh, what games do you have? <laughs> I don't have games on my phone. I have like three for the plane. Yeah, like, I have Candy Crush still, which yeah. I only ever play on flights if I just get so bored and there's no screen. In front yeah, of me. I was gonna say we're judging them. Think about. Uh, no, no, no. As I said, it's our fault. Yeah. It is absolutely our fault because they've seen. It's also a, a thing of like, um, Gracie really, really likes me. <laughs> she really likes me. She loves me so much. Weird no, flex. to a point where, yeah, I know, very strange flex. Uh, my niece yeah. loves me. Um, no, but she, she definitely, I feel like would like watch some of the stuff that I do and and she would like keep up with that, which is not good. Some of the some of the things and stuff. But, uh, yeah, I feel like I've definitely done this. <laughs> Auntie Meg said she likes the taste of cum. <laughs> <laughs> Mummy, what does cardboard and cum taste like? <laughs> As I- UK KFC, darling. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have any more anecdotes? I've kind of complained about the KFC. Oh, I mean, probably should be say something positive. The best shows I've ever had in my career. Yeah. Every night. Insane. Just so much fun. Last night, I think I I literally cried off like all of my eyelashes because I was just laughing so <laughs> fucking hard. I had to – so I, I'm doing all of the camera work. To, I'm doing all of the camera work and stuff for these shows. And last night, I had to set the camera up and – it was such a good show that I literally had to walk all the way back from the camera because otherwise you, that's all you would have been able to hear. Like me literally cr- like crying of laughter. It's funny. Men- Meg is undeniably my biggest fan. I'm absolutely his biggest She's fan. Like the dream girlfriend. You come with me everywhere. You're yeah, but I fucking love it. <laughs> person I could ask for. She's seen the show. 200 times <laughs> and then like i'll just be like yeah so uh, i've got a pretty boring head and meg's just at the back like yeah he fucking does no, i don't get not 
<laughs> those bits. No, but the crowd work's been amazing because the, the big thing about here is I thought it would be like the one type of person, but because it's so culturally diverse, there are so many different variations of a question because obviously each culture and each um, like place has yeah. their own you know, way of saying something or doing something or like the job, even though they could, they could have the same job as someone in Australia, they'll have a different take on it because it's, you know, two yeah. completely different things basically. And so I have, fu- I've been freaking loving it because I've heard the show that, yeah, 200 times over. But I've not only that. mix it up a bit here in the UK though. Yeah. I've changed, I've, there's some bits that are very Australian that I don't do here. Yeah. Kind of like added in some newer bits that I'm going to do on my tour this year in Australia. It definitely is like a, like a little different. But even like the crowd work in Australia, particularly just the question, what do you do for work? Yeah, every young person either works at Coles, Woolies or any fast food place yeah or hospitality or even like and even when it is a tradie and stuff like i we've heard basically the same variation like of those like 200 times over so it becomes quite repetitive even though you can say some fucking hilarious things it's on it like so refreshing it's, yeah a new people even though i talk to new people every night in australia it's more just like I don't know, like in every crowd, because I'm not doing the rest of Europe, which I do want to try and get to other places in Europe, I'm aware that yeah. we're, doing it, we're trying to book it in for next year. People have just traveled, like last night we had like heaps of Irish people because we're up north here. Like we had like people from Hungary, we had people from Berlin. Yeah. Like just the whole crowd is just a mix mash of like Europe and. We had some Brazil. Brazil. Brazil was, that was crazy. Uh, like, and. Lithuania. Yeah. And some people That's literally right. were on holidays and like other places. And then they were like, oh, I, when I got tickets, I was like, fuck it, I'm just going to get on a plane and, and come here. Yeah. And so we were like, wait, so you you don't even you're not even from here. And they're like, no, I'm not from here. I'm from this place. But then I went on a holiday to this place. And then I saw that you had tickets and I was like, fuck it, I'll go there. So then That's I came awesome. to this place and we're like, what is but happening? I, I know <laughs> I opened the podcast with 30 minutes of saying how like miserable, or whatever. That was kind of a joke. They definitely had a soak at my Instagram, but that was just mainly the people in London. I'm not sure if it's like a Scottish thing. I've heard that people up north are super nice. Like that's a stereotype. Yeah. You know, in the sense of like Canadians are super nice. People up north here are apparently super nice. Right? Yeah. Which they are. They're, go- they're beautiful people. So I freaking love it I, here. I don't know if it transcends the whole of the United Kingdom. We'll see. Right? <laughs> we'll find out. <laughs> Based off my Instagram DMs. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, there seems to be like so much respect built in to their culture that it was so obvious. I was about 10 minutes into the first show and I went, oh, we are the convict country. Yes. And it fucking shows it every time I get on a stage in Australia. Yeah. You know what the awesome thing is here? All the rooms are like underground in basements. There's no like cell phone reception. Yeah. So it's just like no one's on their phones. No one talks to each other throughout the show. They're not like in Australia, you say a thing that's relatable and it's not rude because people are trying to enjoy it. But they go, oh my god, oh my god, that's like when the Damien did the thing, and like, blah, blah. and girls, they just start. It's always girls. I know, they and they start talking to each other. That that was respectful though. They literally just will talk out loud. They'll go like, oh my god, oh my god, that's what no, we no, do. I'm that's seriously what, what we happens do in Australia. Yeah, that's what right? I mean. They're, yeah. they're, they're, I'm they're saying just, they're way more disrespectful than that. They just like scream. They're just they're like, screaming oh my god, out. Stacey, that's like when you, you know. And they, yeah, it's so much worse. But here, they're just like, I mean, I don't know what it is. I think there's a little bit of like because I haven't been here ever and there's some people have been watching my content for like five years so there's they're super excited there's definitely yeah. that that's coming into play and i don't think that's the norm i feel like if i keep coming back here every year there's a lot more respect here though you know but it's just like they were like hanging off every word they were so attentive and i f- kind of felt uncomfortable at first about it because i was like why isn't anyone screaming at me or like yelling at their friend or like at the bar obnoxiously oh. ordering a beer too loudly or why hasn't something from the roof fallen down because we're in a fuckhole yes. place but all these comedy clubs have been like super nice and gorgeous intimate. 
Dude. It's it's been so good. I, I feel like people in Australia listen to this like he's never coming back. I know. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. It has been so refreshing having mm. such like a respectful crowd that just wants to laugh and they want to be able to understand and get the joke. And so they don't do those things because they know that if they do that, then it's gonna ruin the joke for not only them, but everyone around them. So they're super respectful yeah. and, and it makes it so of, funny. You know, it makes you it know so funny. Is, uh, I don't know what's happened to Australia, but no one here, oh God, I, know, I, I know it sounds lame because I, I hate when comedians do this, but no one gets offended. And because I'm the, I don't consider myself a very offensive comedian at all. Well, hold on. N- nobody gets offended over things that aren't offensive. Yeah. But here, like everyone's like, oh, because you're joking. Yes. Nice. Play on. That makes sense because, and it's funny because no one would it's ever great. say that. It's yeah. just the most like, refreshing, most fun thing I've ever done in my career. Yeah, I'm going to... Like, I, 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 I'm <laughs> sorry, but it's back. so... I've, I'm having a ball and I don't want it to end. The UK has been I'm not saying Australian so good. crowds are, like, bad. I've had some of the most phenomenal shows I've ever had in oh, my life yeah. in Australia, obviously. You know, people have seen them. There's been some shows that... I'll remember forever. Yeah, right? for sure. But it's just the consistency and the something, some energy in the room that I cannot explain that I've never uh, been given before Yeah, as a performer. And it, it might be a little bit because I'm like exotic to them. I Potentially, have yeah. A lot of people have shows like, I love your accent. Yes, I'm not going to lie. After every single show when I've gone out, because I usually have to go out before you and like, mm. you know, packing down the cameras and stuff uh there's always they're always re-saying the bits just trying to do the accent like <laughs> oh my god I, bl- I i fucking love his accent i fucking love it like hey hey uh, hi everyone and they're like <laughs> trying to like do it's the not accent not even me being funny no. i'm coming off stage going like that was the best show ever and they're just laughing no, I, at me the no, whole time no 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 this <laughs> Say the bits that are funny, but I don't want to. I don't want to say the lines because no, they're the punchlines. It would be also lines. funny if they were just the whole time. They're all just like, "Look at this fucking guy. Thinks he's hilarious. <laughs> he's fucking accent. Look, he thinks we like him. We're just laughing at you. All right, go back home on your fucking plane. All right, or lose your glasses again. <laughs> That'd be awesome. And the whole and I'm just here like I'm having the best week ever. Yeah, no, no it's, it's been good. Th- I really appreciate everyone. It's surreal having people come out of on the other side of the world. So thank you. I know I've been banging on about it, but I I do really appreciate it. And so does Meg. Like Meg has so much fun. I this has been a, so just, good. What the fuck is my life? Like it's, great. it's so good. And so many uh, fans of this podcast. Yeah, I don't know. Just because the podcast is new, I think it's new. We, we were just like kind of surprised i don't know so surprised funny all the girls here like come up to you they come up to you like oh my god like i love you but they uh, all of them i've heard like 10 girls says to you like you are just you are so fucking hot yeah <laughs> you are so fucking hot babe I babes oh my god i have seen you online but in person you are just so gorgeous oh my god we keep doing a, like a darling accent and that's not what they said no that's uh, no that they came from london last night though that's what they did yeah they were like she was like babes I just can't get over it. You are just so different in person. I just can't. I can't. And she was Hella saying you look like shit online. I don't know. She was like, no, she That's was like, kind of a no, she was like, you, you're beautiful online. Like you are gorgeous online. But in person, you were so hot. You were just so hot. I was they're, just, they're very lovely people, but they're so aggressive about it. They're like you. They're, you are the fucking funniest c- I've ever met. Anyway, <laughs> have a good night. Like they're just... yes anyway thank you so much for joining us for another episode uh we hope that you have a wonderful weekend please uh comment below on the youtube video your pub names i want to read them all Um, oh my god i want to i really i'm so excited for this i want to hear them all uh remember you're winding down so chill out it's not a place that i particularly want to turn up at but it's a place i want to go to like a cozy pub and have a i want to go there. yeah i want to go to a cozy pub i'd oh, love be- that the beer shit can people recommend good lager or draft here genuinely haven't oh i had one taddy's that was all right but yeah got burnt a few times not so. gonna lie uh not a fan of it the, the, my palate has not been quenched the brits are <laughs> known for their f- food uh that as well thank you so much we hope uh that you enjoyed us talking about the UK and we'll be back again next week. Goodbye. Bye, Bye, people outside.
Bye. This guy's a star. Bye. Listening to this Bye. whole thing. Bye.